Dr. Luck. Stand aside, nurse. I'm Dr. Homebrew. Welcome back, everybody. Another episode of Dr. Homebrew. Thanks for sticking around with the uh, the old Dr. Homebrew show. we got two shows a month. This is the first show for the month of April, I think, Brian Cooper. I, yeah, don't, uh, right. I don't really know why I'm saying all of this. I guess I'm right. just a little distracted. <laughs> so my intro is uh, suffering, and that's okay. Our last show. No, it's our second show. Jeez, I just screwed up. See what happens yeah. when Brian Shar isn't on when we start? Should we start over? I screwed up. No, I don't want to start over. Are you kidding me? That's work. <laughs> I'm, I'm here now. Hey, what's up, Shar? Uh, save like, us. No, no, we're really starting. Yes, yes. that's what's hey, happening. Hey, there we go. Save uh, us from ourselves. Yes. We do have a mead here. Again, It's it seems like uh, we, we didn't get any meads, and then um, now we've gotten several this year, I think, even, too. So that's pretty cool. I do like judging meads. It gives us a nice chance to learn. And uh, sort of hone our, our mead crafting palette. But before we get to Ashley and her mead, I do want to tell you guys about Five Star Chemicals. You go to fivestarchemicals.com right now and learn everything you need to do to make better beer. Uh, yes, even mead, ciders, anything else, anything you're fermenting or cooking in general at home, but especially fermenting at home when you really need to make sure that everything is clean on the cold side and sanitized on the cold side. Five Star Chemicals has what you need, which is PBW and Star Sand. And if for some reason you don't want to do Star Sand, they have uh, Sandy Clean, which is their iodine-based cleaner, and a couple other fun stuff over there, too. So check them out, fivestarchemicals.com. It will help you make better beer for sure. And mead and what all the things I already said. It's fine. All right. Welcome, Ashley. What's going on? Welcome to the show. Hello. Hey. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it very much. Absolutely. I appreciated Brian, the opportunity. Brian, do you have any questions that you want to ask Ashley? Uh, I do. Uh, and Ashley, first off, thank you for delivering the mead to my house. I'm sorry I just wasn't there. I mean, I'm usually always here and there's always somebody here. Like oh, you, you happen to show up at like the 10 minutes throughout like the week that nobody was at home. <laughs> wow. Way to go, thank, Ashley. Jeez. Thank, thank ah, you for doing winning that. Winning already. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so we're are we're are marking two points a, off for that, by the way. Club? I am. I'm a part of Doze, which is based out of Walnut Creek. Doze. I've never so, heard of that. What is that club? Have they done anything good in the homebrewing community or won any <laughs> kudos or um, awards? You know, like the uh, Radagast and Club of the Year. Uh, oh, yeah. No, never heard of I'm, those guys. <laughs> those guys. <laughs> never heard of yeah. those, those awards. These are made up <laughs> awards. A- had a pretty rad uh, 25th anniversary party last summer, too. That was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Nice. That, they're, and they're doing you, some you're good my work, local good homebrew work. club. You know, I'm still a word of wisdom uh, <laughs> after many, many years of Just being one. a word of wisdom. But, yeah. you know, I, I've got a now that we're kind of post COVID and I'm all vaccinated and double oh. boosted and everything. I need to uh, think about coming to a doze meeting at some point. There you go. Absolutely. You're yeah. more than welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I want to know about Been post-COVID, one... Brian, but we're, you know. Yeah. Jason would be like 93 years old. <laughs> COVID forever. Yeah, it's still here. It's still God here. Damn damn it. Two people got it last Sassafras- year. I wish, uh, man, if we can get down to that, I will I will, I will, will kiss you, Brian Cooper. To tell you that COVID right is forever. But what if you get COVID from kissing Cooper? I mean, that's uh, entirely possible. I would um, play the lottery. I mean, it's more of an point. airborne virus, but still. Hey, man, who knows? Well, anyway, look, as exciting as me kissing Cooper is, let's talk about <laughs> Ashley and her meads. Ashley, are you a mead maker by, uh, by um, definite trade? I was going to say trade, but it's not like, you know, we're in the um, 1800s or anything like that. No, by hobby right now, there but I am actually looking to go, I guess, pro in the future. I guess you oh. want to open a meadery in the area. So oh, it's nice. A nice. Building to the cause. <laughs> okay, excellent. How long have you been making mead? <laughs> just about a year and a half <laughs> okay okay hey you gotta I've enjoyed start somewhere mead, though i've enjoyed me have you learned but, a lot i have learned a lot in fact i just did the conference last weekend um uh wibs uh, i've never heard of it women's brewers um it's okay. a conference that was over the weekend and nice oh wow star was there um, there you go okay all right <laughs> wow but cool. a lot of water science um oh. malt science a lot of really fun stuff where was that it was virtual. Oh, nice. Held it virtual. Oh, pff, even That's better. That's really neat. That's the mm-hmm. way to do it these days. You know, because yep. of COVID, Brian Shar. 
<laughs> hey, I'm not saying that we you, people shouldn't take precautions and be safe and everything I know, else. No, I don't want to get into it. One I'm of those just precautions joking. are like I'm old, so I've gotten gotten both my shots, gotten I two know. boosters. I'm, I'm good. I'm just kidding, Char. All right. <laughs> going so, to homebrew con? What meat are we uh what meat are we gonna try today here, Ashley? So it's um Blackberry Blossom Traditional. Um it's a sack meat. It's about a four uh, 14.7%, so it's just into sack territory. Oof. All right. Um, Let's go. It was made last year um, as semi-sweet, and uh, I think it's good, but uh, okay. we'll see what you guys think. What, and so a question I used to ask a lot, and I don't, but I will now because you sort of prefaced it with your looking to, to sort of open a meadery. What are you looking for feedback-wise from us? Um, I'm looking for all the critiques. I'm okay. looking for building my palate and um, okay. what I taste. And I want to hear what you taste so I can relate what I'm tasting to what's in that glass. Okay. Um, do you want to, would you buy this feedback section? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, That'd be cool, right? Let's do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the answer is going to be this? yes over all across this? the board. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Brian Cooper, why don't you start since we gave the luxury of Brian Shar starting to the last, uh, the last, last Jason, show. Yeah. yeah. I noticed that. Thank you. Actually, that worked out well. <laughs> You're welcome. He, he, yeah. He, he and Jamil got to sandwich my review of the beer, which was yeah, uh, maybe a little nicer than theirs. But yeah. Anyway, we were, <laughs> yeah, we were all was, I felt a little bad. Five, six points. So it's eh. okay. Like I, I basically told the man that uh, I didn't have anywhere to spit his beer out. So whatever you said, <laughs> I heard that. I took, I took the brunt of that. So it's fine. We try not to, yeah, we try not to say that to our entrance. But sometimes you just have to be brutally honest. Well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, just uh, based on his attitude, you know, I was like, okay, he, he can, he can understand where this is coming from, and it's fine. Like it's all right. And he had kind of a cursed brew day on top yes, of it. Once right. we heard about that. Yeah. Anyway, Cooper, okay. let's do it. I cracked this bottle uh, last night. I've got the second half of the bottle here today, and uh, yeah, of course, it's a, it's it's a an M one B semi sweet uh, traditional mead. Um, declared carbonation level is still. Uh, the sweetness is of course medium for semi sweet, and uh, strength is sack. So when you open it, if it was a massive hiss, I would have been like surprised and like, oh well, that bottle got away with uh, yeah got away from from her but uh no it's it's uh just a little minor like opening sound like there's no escaping air but you just hear the sound of the opening which we don't we don't get very often here on dr homebrew <laughs> click open okay the bouquet so we're working off a mead score sheet here obviously and um, i'm hoping i passed the mead exam so i can check that mead judge <laughs> box but i haven't gotten my results back oh. yet. um Ashley was actually there helping with that exam and, and uh, a part of it and, and would have taken it if it wasn't completely full. I yep. hope you'll, you'll find a seat in a meat exam someday soon. And the bouquet, uh, a very pleasant uh, floral honey character, medium high, uh, smooth, moderate alcohol with uh, medium high fruity esters, somewhat berry-like, um, strong aroma of honey, quite pleasant and inviting. Uh, and when you smell something that has the impression that it might be, uh, you know, sweet tasting, uh, yeah, I, I think I have a weird thing calling out sweet in the nose, but it is sweet seeming. It's got, a, there's a lot to take in here and it's tastes like it's going to like be nice and sweet and uh, you know, um, maybe not sickly sweet or anything, but it's just like, it has that impression and your nose, I think as a human, like sugar is one of your brain's favorite foods. So you're probably good at smelling out things that are, are sweet in some way, something to, tips you off to that <laughs> but uh, i don't know what the mechanism is um the, the complexity seems seems nice and high uh you know so there's a lot a lot of different thing, elements at play here that are they're that playing well together um and when i read the description of you know i i, I guess i've probably smelled blackberry blossoms and in, in, over time it's you know it's that floral but they they describe it in the bgcp literature as leafy so i'm like Am I getting leafy? I, I don't leafy, leafy like plant like leafy. Well, no, like, I understand what not like a table leaf, fresh. Brian. I understand what leafy means. I'm just like what kind I just of don't leaf. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just it's like a I'm car. Grasping. It's like the leaf car where you charge it. And... Yeah, yeah. The, the Nissan. Yeah, <laughs> uh, doesn't smell like a Nissan. Um, it doesn't smell I'm leafy to... though. I don't. Yeah, you know. that's just yeah, a weird. I'm, I'm just picking on it because it's a weird. It's a weird descriptor. It's a weird descriptor. 
but yeah. the other descriptor is it's very distinctive. So I guess okay. you just have to go out and smell blackberry blossoms and, and until you, you know, until as you, you know, learn. The, the, <laughs> yeah, the, the the blossom often smells a lot different than the fruit. You know, yeah, as evidenced sure. by orange blossom and a lot of other things. But yeah. and they can be pleasant in their own right, of course. Um, it, you know, that's a nice a nice aroma. I like and, and just a, a real nice honey like character in the nose. Um, mm. It smells like real clean, fresh honey. Um, so I give it an eight out of ten bouquet. Um, appearance wise, it's a light yellowy golden colored mead kind of, uh, well, like kind of, it's got a golden tinge to it, but it's almost got like a straw like element to it as well. It's like really light yellow. Um, the, the mead does coat the sides of the glass, uh, pretty nicely. It's not like dripping down with legs, but it, it it's very coating. And, and as the, the coating slowly descends, you see a little bit of legs, um, no carbonation visible here. Uh, it's fairly clear, only a, a little bit of light haze, which I would take a point away for. So I, uh, five out of six for appearance. Um, Flavor-wise, I get a medium strong blackberry blossom honey note. Uh, it's very it's very floral and and uh, just you know general honey like. I would say the the sweetness seems somewhat higher than just semi sweet. It is it is nice and sweet, but it's certainly not cloying or anything like that. So semi sweet, it it fits. It's it you could almost declare it as sweet, but it's not. You know, just sometimes just with the balance of it, if it falls into stats, like okay, this should be semi sweet, but it tastes a little sweeter. You could declare it as sweet and get away with that too. Um, there's plenty of sweetness here to go around, but it's uh, again not not super candy like or anything like that. Uh, medium low acid giving it a pleasant balance is not too, too sharp or acidic um, smooth with, with a medium high al- alcohol that plays well uh, with the other elements here. There's no carbon dioxide. It's not even, yeah, it's not no, no little bubbles or anything forming here. It's just completely still as declared. Um, the tannins are low and out of the way, not really harsh or biting, but there's a little bit of tannin there that's playing off the other stuff. Um, just overall in the aftertaste, I get this nice, sweet floral honey aftertaste and it's, it's, it's really nice. I, I landed at a, a 20 out of 24 for, for flavor. It really, I really like the flavor of this meat a lot. Um, overall drinking pleasure, overall impression. Um, it, it just seems like a really cleanly made varietal honey mead with uh, very pleasant blackberry blossom honey uh, notes just a touch sweeter seeming than the declared, but uh, you know, not, not too far off there, honestly. Uh, and, and maybe a hint more of tannin or something could help give it a little more structure and offset that lend, you know, th- that was one thing that was maybe a little bit low um, lend the perception of a touch more dryness. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, overwhelming alcohol wise. I, I, I kind of said that the alcohol sack mead, it sure doesn't taste like, the typical sack mead that I get that is like, boom. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, although sometimes, you know, if you mix it with berries or something, it can be very deceptive because you're getting the sweetness and the esters from the fruits playing with the alcohol and everything else that's there. You can just drink a little bit of a 16 percenter and it tastes like candy juice, you know, it's <laughs> great. Okay. But uh, you know, this is, I was going to say, it's, it seems pretty uh, deceptive for what's there, but it's not like, super strong sacks so that comment you know about it not being it's on the low end for sack that makes sense but i i think if you called this standard strength you know it would it would probably yeah that's a little more than standard so uh but it's a nice job keeping that alcohol nice and smooth very enjoyable um nice work i eight out of ten for overall impression i i landed at a 41 on the smead so i i think you know i'd like like to hear what brian has to say about it too but um I just, it has, um, now I've made a lot of meads too. And, uh, when I tasted the, you know, what I, when I wanted metal, I just was in my garage bottling this mead and I tasted this mead. I was just like, that's a wow mead. That's a really good mead. And, you know, it was the one that went on and got me a medal. And I like, just, I was pretty new to making meads and I tried to repeat it later and I just couldn't make it the same ever again. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's one of those things. It was a weird batch where, you know, I, I didn't hit my gravity. So I took half the batch and I watered it up down to the gravity that I wanted to make a hydromel. Mm. And then that one just fermented out with a perfect semi-sweet. And it was just like 
the magic mead and I never could make it again. <laughs> and maybe I have to do that thing where I water mm-hmm. it down and do this weird, whatever you I gotta did. Do it all over again. I have all the notes and do it all over again. Yep. But this has all the things that I want in a mead and none of the things that I don't really, for the most part, it's, you know, there's minor adjustments you could make, but overall it's a very lovely mead. And I, I like the, the varietal character in it. it seems right on. So yeah. Excellent mead. Thank you. What was Thank the you. score? Uh, 41. Would you buy it? I'd buy a lot of that. Okay, there you go. Pretty good money. All right. Well, uh, Ashley has your credit card, so she'll just go ahead and bill you. <laughs> she, you'll be gallons? a pro starting right this second. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, Cooper, just <laughs> give out your credit card number right now <laughs> on, okay. on, on the, the air, air yeah. including okay. your One, that little three-digit number. Two. <laughs> yeah. Three. Uh, all right, Char, go for it. All right. So, uh, Ashley, thank you for sharing. I've... I have to fess up that my, I, I may be a you know, grandmaster beer judge, but I might as well be an apprentice mead judge. I'm really just not that familiar with mead, uh, and I, I can't speak as intelligently about it as Cooper can or a lot of other folks. But uh, I don't think that my my score sheet's going to be as thorough uh, as, as his was, but I, I give, give it my best shot here. So bouquet and aroma, I thought it was very clean. Uh, I definitely got the aroma of the honey and a little bit of what I thought of as the the blackberry character. You know, that's also one of those things where I, I never know if I'm talking myself into that. Uh, you know, can I taste the berries or am I talking myself into that? Regardless, I, I got some character like that. Uh, I got a sort of a, a the honey, it was sort of a medium to low honey aroma, no ethanol aroma, despite the fact this is 14%. I didn't get like a strong sharpness. Some of the ethanol, a clean ethanol has a sweet character to it. And I suspect that to me kind of mixed with the honey Mm -hmm. uh, because you're going to smell ethanol at 14%, but I think it's just subtle and an evidence of a good fermentation, you know, clean fermentation that it wasn't a harsh fusel, nothing poked out that was obviously, oh yeah, this is ethanol. Uh-huh. You know, it was just smooth and, and part of the honey. Uh, so eight out of 10 for aroma. Uh, appearance, six out of six. Uh, it's crystal clear. Uh, it's uh, is the problem with these Zoom backgrounds. You can't always tell. You don't want to look at my kitchen and everything else and all, whatever I, I need to clean. <laughs> but <laughs> you, you can't really see the, uh, you, you've seen your mead, you know what it looks like. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of a light golden, like a Chardonnay. You know, again, if I hold this up and look at it, I think this looks kind of like what I expect a glass of Chardonnay to look like. Uh, it's uh, still, it has legs, uh, you know, six out of six uh, flavor. Uh, I, I really enjoyed this 18 out of 24 uh, at a low sweetness initially. And I think if, if it's like wine, right, and I kind of think of mead a little bit more like wine sometimes in terms of judging. Uh, if you're talking about a sweet wine, you know, like a dessert wine, that's almost cloying, right? And that's not bad, but you need to be, you need to know what you're in for if you're going to have like a dessert wine and it's just a thick cloying wine. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, like a normal Chardonnay or something is not, it's going to be dry. Uh, And anything that's maybe got a little hint of sweetness is going to be, you know, semi-sweet, you know, off dry, whatever they call that. Uh, And this definitely has that, you know, it's not something I think of as being sweet, but there is some, you know, low degree of, of sweetness here that is, I, I think, really complements the beverage. Uh, full mouthfeel, uh, low acidity. I'm just marching through. I'll do it, but my old buddy Kevin Pratt taught me to do years ago with the beer spreadsheet. Just look, go, go march through every word, comment on, and there's a whole list. I'm going to comment on each of these things probably, you know, in a relatively uninformed manner. Um, well, that it, makes it, sense because little... Kevin Pratt could also talk a lot too. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, there's a reason why he and I are friends. Yeah, right. <laughs> we can right. just can, we can blah 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 you know endlessly about uh, anything. Uh, I, I got sort of a medium degree of tannin, uh, low low alcohol flavor. Again, I think the ethanol is a sweet ethanol, not a fusel or harsh uh, ethanol. So that's I got that at kind of a low level in a pleasant way. Uh, low kind of blackberry character. Uh, I thought it was a really amazing balance of all these different characteristics. There's all these different dimensions of 
of fruit and sweetness and acidity and tannin, I think really all came together in a way that to borrow JP's language isn't poking out different places. It's very smooth. Yeah, it's uh, jazz, jazz hands, poking out hands. <laughs> uh, it's not uh, poking out everywhere. It's just a very smooth, well-composed beverage. You know, there's no carbonation, but it's not supposed to be. It's a still mead. Mm -hmm. uh, smooth finish, pleasant aftertaste, again, 18 out of 24. Uh, overall impression, eight for a total of 40. And Cooper and I managed to come in within a point, despite the fact that I know next to nothing about mead. So that just means we're just you know, totally simpatico with our That's judging yeah. as usual. Either Brian, well either Cooper <laughs> failed the judge exam and he should have, <laughs> or Brian Shar should pass by proxy because Cooper did. <laughs> we'll, we'll treat it. That's how that works. Yeah, we should get that honorary <laughs> mead, Gordon. Uh, Gordon, give us the honorary <laughs> mead uh, apprentice yeah. uh, thing. I, I, I'd appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, th Ashley, thank you very much for sharing. I think this is a really tasty mead uh, that yeah. has a lot of flavor and complexity. Uh, I don't know much about mead, but I know I like this. So uh, <laughs> really, really good job. And like JP asked Cooper, yes, I, I would purchase this. What, okay. uh, what score did you give it? Uh, 40. 40. Okay. Uh, before we get to, to you, Ashley. So I, you know, sometimes I comment on this stuff. Sometimes I don't, I like this meat a lot. I'm blown away by the, the aromatics. I think you've controlled those very well. I think the honey that you used is very good, um, with a really good mead. Um, and I'll just use moonlight as an example, cause it's the only commercial example that I really know of. Um, <laughs> Michael's meads, you can really just smell them all day. They're so aromatic and so bright and, I think uh, emblematic representative, I don't know, some word like that um, mm -hmm. of, of the source honey. And, you know, you have to have a good product uh, or good honey to make a good product. Uh, I, I tasted, I, I taste sometimes in, in meads and I don't know what this is. Um, almost, <laughs> almost pa paste like a glue stick aroma, but in the flavor. And I don't know what that is. It could be borderline minty. So I don't know if it's a yeast thing or not, but if no one else got it, it's probably just my weird tongue. I, I, I don't know, but it's, it's not off putting. And, and I think I taste it in meads more often than not, to, which leads me to believe there's some, you know, I, I don't know, mechanical reason within just making the mead that this sometimes happens. So it's not, I wouldn't ever say it's like a flaw, but with this, and I don't know the, um, the, uh, the, the style very well, like uh, probably no less than Char does, which, you know, I know it's hard to believe, um, but the sack be meat is pretty, pretty shocking. man. Yeah. The semi-sweet sack meat. I, I, it sort of, it, I want, I mean, I would probably give it like a 38 or a 40 also. I would, I want, I, it, it wants me, I want just a little more, a little more out of it. It's almost like it almost just sort of glides into neutral when you're done drinking it. You're like, okay, I want, I just want like a little more sweetness, a little more flavor, a little more just goose me a little bit more, just a bit, like 10% more. Like I, in my yeah. opinion, you're almost there because it does sort of finish on the warmer side. Mm -hmm. And I know it's a me that's 14%. And I, I understand all that, but I just, I don't know if you can figure out how just to like kind of zhuzh it up a little bit with some, a little bit. It, it's great. But if so I like walk out at 10 and needs to turn up to 11 kind of thing, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, man. Yeah. And you know, but if I walk into a tap room, if I walk into your place, and I order this and I go, oh, yeah, that's it's very good. I would I would not be disappointed. I would still recommend the thing. Um, but, yeah, this this one just it leaves me just wanting a little bit more. It's very nice and refreshing. So I do like that. But if you want to maybe it, you keep it like this, maybe it's a 12 percenter, not a 14 and a half or whatever it was. I just I don't know. There's there's some the last the last 10 percent for me yeah. is, is sort of not, not there. But, uh, <clears throat> and I don't know why curiosity, I have no advice we'll, on that. <laughs> yeah. no idea why. We'll talk about the recipe and there's, there's nothing wrong with back sweetening a meat uh, and, and Michael and a lot of people do it. So, uh, but I would be curious and I would maybe suspect that this is a, a back sweetened mead uh, because there's, it's a, the, the, the honey character is so strong in it. I get a little bit of a, a raw honey character, but it's such a pleasant honey that I, it smells I, it so doesn't, good. Doesn't bother me. So yeah, it's so. Um, yeah, so we just I talk agree. about uh, talk about your your recipe and your process yeah. a little bit. Let's do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so 
it was a five gallon batch. So I started with a little bit of honey, <laughs> <laughs> fired up to about 1110. Um, and I use, if anyone's interested, I use glory bee honey, which I was able to get through Costco, which I haven't seen in a while. <laughs> which is sad. That's cool. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. But I w- didn't have to pay for shipping, so it was great. Hell I don't yeah, have it in dude. store, but yeah. I could get it online. Okay. <laughs> and it was totally worth the price. Nice. Um, and I've really enjoyed the honey. I use a little bit of tannin in the beginning mm-hmm. because I found when I tried making this in, in the beginning, it just lacked a little bit of that tannin, that little body feel that I wanted to wanted to translate into this the sweetness and the balance of the mead. Mm-hmm. Um, when I first did this, um, I tried a few different types of yeast. Um, because I like my test batches and I'm a fanatic about yeast, but um, landed on QA 23. Um, and it was kind of a toss up between D47 and QA 23. Uh, they're both uh, like white wines, dry white wine yeast, mm-hmm. fermented uh, with Fermaid K on a schedule, um, fermented to dry, and then I stabilize and allow it to rest. And then I do back sweeten. And it was back sweetened to about 10 15. Actually, when you say stabilized, what does that mean? Um, potassium metabisulfide and potassium sorbate. Um, and I add okay, those. Okay, so you're, you're, you're killing the yeast at that point, so it's not going to yeah. ferment further. And Correct. the other one, uh, yeah, okay. prevents it from reproducing, reproducing. as well. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Gotcha. The yep. sorbate, yep. Yeah. Um, I have actually low heat pasteurized this in the past when I had smaller batches and bottled Um, but as I get bigger batches, it takes way too long to low heat pasteurize. And then I recently had an issue with uh, a low heat pasteurization of one of my needs that kind of destroyed it, made it very acidic. Mm. Sorry, my cat is uh, very needy. (laughs) Never apologize for cat Um, love. Yeah, we all had that issue (laughs) uh, as part of the show, I think. That is a glossy cat. (laughs) Yes, a beautiful cat. He's very soft. He's very soft. Looks like he's very loving. (laughs) Love it. But uh, yeah, so... I don't really heat pasteurize too much anymore now because of that incident. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. it didn't <laughs> get scorched or anything. It was just a little. No, uh... it just, it turned, I had an Acer Glen that was amazing and it was a bourbon barrel aged. The bourbon oh. barrel kind of came through it was really pleasant on the nose. The flavor was great. And then I was like, you know what, I'm going to take this into the club. So I better stabilize it so I can bottleize it, bottle it to take it in. And so I did a low heat pasteurization and it just, change the flavor completely okay so you're yeah you're not talking about pasteurizing the must you're talking about the the finished meat the actual okay. finished meat. yeah oh yep. that's a that's such a bummer yeah, yeah you that, do the that stinks. You, uh, you do the no heat method then you're not uh yes i'm doing a no heat method now. Yeah. yeah okay cool yeah I'm, I'm not a believer in heating fermented beverages after they have fermented because I think just the risks of just what happening, just what happened to, to yours, yeah. uh, whether it's beer or mead or whatever, you know, the you're, you're asking for oxidation, you're accelerating chemical processes that maybe you don't want to. There's a lot of stuff that you've gone to all this effort to control and, and control properly. And then you heat it up and then it just, everything can go out of control really quickly. Mm-hmm. And I learned the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way to learn sometimes. Well, better than never learning at all, I guess. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Well, very good. Um, And you said this is a year old. Yes. Okay. How have you found it changing over time? What are your, what Um, are your flavor profiles, uh, you know, dipping? So it starts very hot. Like Mm -hmm. it is super hot for a good while. And, um, it, calms down over time and you get more of that blackberry flavor which is what i i really love about blackberry honey Mm -hmm. um someone was talking about the flavor i think it was brian shar um the flavor for blackberry honey actually has notes of the actual blackberry in there so it makes it kind of one of those rare honeys where you do get the berry flavor out of it so you weren't wrong to taste that Oh, yeah. good. I wasn't totally imagining mm-hmm. that. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did I did get some berry-like notes in the flavor for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's it's one of the unique honeys, and I really enjoy it because of that. Cool. But. And then um, did you use any finings, or what do you clarify with? Um, I let it rest and clear out as much as possible. And once I back sweeten with honey, I hit it with uh, super clear. That's uh, what is that again? Uh, bentonite um, or something? Or yeah, um, yeah, I'm blanking on it at the moment. Yeah, it's a Come clarifying it. agent, Brian. Come on, it's, it's a clarifier. Just super clear. But it's, it's some yeah. stuff. It's a clear thing clear. called super clear that clears clears it up. Yeah, we can look it up. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. 
Uh, cool. Well, that sounds great. Uh, Ashley, do you have any questions for the guys at all? Um, I don't think so. Cause it sounds like you all buy it. So you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be all right. Yeah. Okay. When you start, you've already meeting. signed us up for your mead club. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's, absolutely. Uh, yeah. It's uh Kizalo, K- That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There you go. Bless you. Right. Um, all right, Ashley. Well, Hey, we are always here to, uh, to taste your meads and, uh, come on anytime. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes. I really appreciate it. Excellent. Me too. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing. Next time you bring some by, I'll try to be sure to be here. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. I hope you're back on the show next month. And also next month, it's going to be our ninth anniversary. Our first Holy show God. was released in May, 2013. Oh my so, God. Wow. That's we're going to bring you something special for that. I have a, Definitely. a fig that I just did fig and, and black pepper. That sounds good to me. Honestly, that sounds nice. great. All right. Hang on everybody. It's a uh, Dr. Homebrew. We're going to be right back. Now, back to the examination. All right, welcome back, everybody. We are here with another, well, not another beer, with a beer this time. We had a mead, now we have a beer. This one is uh, a salted caramel porter. And I think I can honestly say I've never had a salted caramel porter beer before. I'm pretty excited about that. Brewed by Sean. Sean, welcome to the show, man. Uh, Thanks for having me. Yeah, no worries, man. I appreciate it's you sending nice, me some beers. Nice label here, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, yeah. That's all, all thanks to the wife there. <laughs> hey, Brian, nice. can, I, can I ask him the usual question that you ask people? Yeah, go for it, man. So, Sean, all right, are you in a homebrew club? I am in a homebrew club. Uh, Mads Emerges. Uh, there's this guy, Brian Cooper. He's, uh, I think he's the vice president. Oh, yeah, uh, that's why you wanted to ask. All right. Well, hopefully he's better than our you. Cooper. I uh, looks kind of familiar to this guy. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I seem to recall founding a club a long time ago, like 15 years ago now. But yeah, we mm. called it we called it the Mads Averages. Uh, oh yeah, I, every every ne- second Thursday of the month, I'm there too. <laughs> Brian never <laughs> never misses an opportunity to talk about his club ever. Madsimergist dot com. Where yeah, do you meet every something month? Something like that. At, Who knows. Uh, we are nomadic at the moment. Yeah. So, okay. Well, good. Uh, we've yeah, had a heavyweight brewing, craft brewing, and Livermore. All right. Well, let's get back to Sean here and his place. beer for a second. Yeah, Sean. Uh, have you made a yourself. salted caramel porter before? Is this your very first opportunity to do this? Uh, this is my first attempt. Yeah. First attempt. Um, right. I, it's only says, been brewing for about ten months now, but uh, I've been wow. you know just I go out in different spectrums and try and brew all sorts of different stuff 10 so months like dude it took me like four years to brew my first pale ale i don't know what the fuck you're doing um ice cream man <laughs> is that is that uh, the thing you're sort of going for like um tell me about the ice cream man it's on the label so i'm just kidding there's a skull there. if you look closely it was just a kind of a something i think of like ice cream salted caramel okay yeah, it wasn't nothing anything specific, just kind of like Got that's it. what we came up with. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's not your serial mm, killer nickname. That's really ballsy, man. Le- brewing less than a year. I mean, a salted caramel porter sounds very complicated to make, and I would I would have been 100% terrified to even approach that. So good for you for not being me. Yeah, um, well, it was not easy to find, like, any real ways of doing it, you know? there's There's not a lot of... A lot of my stuff is just, you know, YouTube and stuff like that. And sure. Google. And I, I couldn't, I could hardly find anything on Sar- Salted Cone Reporter. So this is a, this is right. a lot of experimentation here. Okay. Yeah, well, so good. Sean starts brewing during the pandemic, basically, and then comes to our meeting and, and, you know, we're like, well, bring some beer at, you know, the first meeting. And, and he sounds like an energetic brewer. And, we're, and so the second meeting, he does bring some beer and he brings a salted caramel power, a, a, a salted caramel porter and a sour. And I was like, wow, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> He's that's an adventurous. Right uh, out of the gate. For, for a 10 months end. You're, I you're love right, it. JP. All right, Shar, why don't you start us off, man? No, certainly. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing. And man, yeah, to, to talk like all these guys, man, what I was brewing 10 months into brewing in like 1993 <laughs> was not, not even close to this. I mean, that's, uh, but even I'll say this, even though we have so many more ingredients and so much more information available to us today, there's an amount of skill and finesse that you you 
you, you have to have, and it was, it was sort of a matter of talent. Uh, and man, you got a lot of talent to be able to put this together after, after 10 months of brewing. That's, that's for sure. Uh, but I did make a note for bottle inspection. It's a nice bottle. And I got a good authoritative hiss when I opened it up. Uh, aroma uh, started off with good dark malt aroma at a medium level. Toasty more than roast. But a low caramel. Uh, overall, kind of low aroma. Probably because it was maybe a little colder than it should have been when I judged this. So I have the one bottle and I opened this up at about uh, 6.30. It's about 9.30 now. It's definitely warmed up a lot, so I'm getting a lot more you know, sort of aroma in, in general out of it. This is a, uh, a you know a salted caramel porter. I'm not getting a lot of caramel out of the aroma, uh, but overall, there's no off aromas, and it it it, it smells really nice. I give this a seven out of twelve. Appearance: it's dark brown, clear with a slight haze. To the extent, it's, it's kind of hard to tell with a beer this dark. Uh, large, persistent tan head. So that's three out of three. Uh, initially, the flavor was a uh, dark malt, and I got just a little bit of phenol. And what's fascinating is that as it warms up, I wasn't getting any salt out of it when it was colder. And as it warms up, I definitely get the salt, and I'm not getting the phenol. Hmm. And again, as we do on the show sometimes, I'm going to change some of my my uh, 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 scores Uh-oh. on the fly. <clears throat> on the fly score changing. Let's go. This is the kind of excitement and that we, you could only get from uh, live beer judging on Dr. Homebrew. Uh, so there's kind of a low to medium salt that comes out, uh, and it's a lot more, uh, I think the caramel and the salt are a lot more noticeable as it, as it warms up some. And I'm going to cross out where I said low phenol, because I'm I not think, getting that now. I think we've That's never strange. on this show have ever said low to medium salt. I never have. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> and pick a side, though. Is it low or medium or medium low? Oh, there medium you go. Low. Yeah, it's medium low. Medium low. Uh, All right. And it's interesting. You know, I wonder, because a lot of the times, almost never when you're judging a beer, does something that you think of as a flaw go away as it gets warmer? Almost always it gets worse. Now, the, de- the exception is aroma. Sometimes there's something obnoxious you'll get at the very beginning of a pour that'll blow off and not smell later with flavor that it only gets more intense. And I wonder if there's some weird interplay of like the saltiness and the temperature where it gives some sort of a aroma at a lower temp that it doesn't, or a flavor at a lower temp that it doesn't at a higher temp. I'm mm. not enough of a chemist to know that, but. Uh, anyway, or you I'm just gonna, mistook uh, it for something else. Yeah, it, exactly. So there's sort of a low background sweetness of caramel which is there. Uh, hot bitterness comes up to almost balance in mid palate. Uh, the caramel is subtle, but it's present. Uh, I think it's well attenuated. Uh, finish is pleasant and short. Uh, I gave it 14 out of 20 for, for flavor. Uh, mouthfeel five out of five, medium carbonation, no warming. Uh, it's creamy with no astringency, medium body. Uh, overall impression uh, I'm going to adjust that on the fly too. Going to give that an eight for a total of 37. I think this is a really easy drinking beer uh, that I really enjoyed. And I think one of the things I really enjoyed about it was the subtlety that the caramel was present and the, the salt was present uh, and they kind of synergistically worked together, which is why salted caramel is like a candy works. Uh, and the subtlety is what I thought was really good about it. And that's also the thing that's maybe a little tricky about this beer for competition is that if you're, if, if you like this beer and I, I like this beer, and if you like drinking it the way it is, just keep making it exactly the way it is. I think that if you're going to enter this in competition, particularly in experimental, you know, 34C, which is what, you know, Cooper and I discussed beforehand, we put this in the experimental category. Mm. The problem with entering something like that in a competition is that judges tend to, for better or worse, want those, in, want those declared ingredients to really jump out and hit them in the face. Over oh, something and, that really pops, yeah, yeah, like really pop. Oh, she pops, and they really want, really want to have it uh, come out and pop. Uh, and I think the salt is there, and the caramel is there, but the caramel might be too subtle 
for some judges to really appreciate its its presence. Uh, and so you're kind of competition wise, almost kind of rolling the dice here, uh, depending on what kind of skilled judges you get doing the the judging in the experimental category. Humble uh, brag. Yeah, is this something? Was that oh, humble JP, brag? <laughs> you might, you know, it's you might not get the best, you know, the no, no, judges. That's not what I'm saying. Like, I'm not like saying it at all, here. JP. But I'm you just might saying. not get me judging your beer. You'll have some other grandmaster <laughs> yeah, judge. Yeah, yeah. It's not as good. That's right. But then it's also the situation, like with IPAs, right? A lot of that has to do how are you going to score. It depends on where you are on the flight, right? So even you know, a lot of judges. You know, any judge, right? You're doing an experimental flight and maybe you have eight beers on that flight, six beers, whatever, and you get something that's subtle. And if you get it early on, you might be really like, wow, this is the one, this is this is the one that deserves the 40 or something, right? Right. Uh, and then you but get if it, it comes if it comes it. like the last in the flight after you've had like, you know, uh a, a what, a kiwi the jalapeno fruit, uh jalapeno. Uh, yeah, smoked, uh, smoked uh, cheddar, whatever. Then, yeah, it, it's that that can also can also affect that. But uh, you know, I might consider if you're brewing it for yourself and you like how it tastes, keep doing it. If you're doing it for competition, I might bump up the caramel flavor just a little. Uh, and I'll be curious later on when you talk about your recipe how you were able to get the caramel flavor because usually something like that you know it ferments out altogether. And it's just hard to get that 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 flavor without it coming across di- diacetyly. You know, I got caramel flavor, it did not come across like diacetyl at all. That's and a that's, good point. that's a good that's a good achievement because mm-hmm. a lot of times mm-hmm. stuff in that caramel butterscotch family, it it tastes good. It's a good candy. You get it in beer, and it can be, you know, it signals diacetyl, and oftentimes is kind of a, a perceived as a flaw. But really good job with that, and I'm going to stop. You stop yapping about this and uh, right. let Cooper have a chance to talk. Yeah, there's a fine line between a light butterscotch and full blown like hot buttered popcorn. You know, it's yeah a finer line than you would think. <laughs> but yeah, you're, you're very right. That's a fine, fine line. Yep. All right. Cool. Well, yeah. Again, I uh, when I open this bottle, got a nice little hiss upon opening. Um, it's attractive bottle. Well, you know, nice, nice fill level. Um, Judging as a 34C experimental beer with just salted caramel porter as the uh, specialty claim. And that's that's fine. When you enter a beer like this, you don't have to declare it as an American porter or any other kind of porter. I was kind of keying off the American porter guidelines just to have something to work from. Uh, Me too. The, the BGCP 2015 because it's an you know, American brewed beer. It would be the most logical thing. Doesn't seem like an English porter, but uh, anyway, uh, there's some fine. There are different ways you could declare it that would make the judges think different things and and judge it differently. But I think the way you entered it is fine. Aroma wise, it's got a pleasant and smooth dark malt character. Uh, there's no burnt quality at all. It's like a mellow porter. It's like really smooth. Um, I do get some light caramel notes intertwined with that, uh, but they are low. I'm getting some fairly uh, smooth coffee-like note in there too, a little light chocolate. There's a lot of complexity without it poking out as roasty or burnt or harsh at all, which I really like. It's it's like porter mellow. It's not like one of those really big. It, it's less like American porter than it is just generally porter-like. It's like you know not not standing out as English or like really strongly as a, an American robust porter kind of a thing, but it's just porter with everything else that's going on. You might be careful with making it too too much strong strongly on the on the dark side, uh, or it's going to make it even harder to get some of the specialty stuff that's going on. So that's a that's that was a good direction to go with it. I think, um, yeah, light chocolate, some hints of toffee. Uh, the hops are low, a little bit earthy. I'm not getting any DMS or diacetyl in there. Uh, DMS is like a cooked corn kind of thing you can get sometimes. Diacetyl is that artificial butter. None of that is there. Uh, this seems very cleanly fermented, nice and smooth. Um, there is a low alcohol note in there. I couldn't help but as I was judging it to read the, the label and see uh, this is a yeah seven point nine percent. Wow, that's high. Good for gravy. A porter. So uh, I'm like, wow, that is smooth for how strong it is, and maybe that's where some of the sweetness is coming from too. 
uh, when you get into the flavor. But uh, the, the alcohol does come through in the nose, and you do notice it as a kind of a sweetness. Um, Appearance-wise, rich brown color, um, seems quite clear with a low tan head you know, that sticks around for a short while before fading, kind of turns into a collar around the edge of the glass there. Um, the beer has kind of some orangey brown highlights to it. It's you know, good appearance, three out of three. Um, Flavor-wise, smooth and sweet dark malt is up front. That low caramel uh, comes in behind it, a little bit hidden, but it's there, just lightly perceptible alongside uh, um, somewhat modest, but definitely noticeable tingle of, of saltiness there. And I don't know that I would, I would argue to go higher on the saltiness. Like Brian said, it's probably maybe a little harder to get when it's super cold. Um, yeah, I think the salt, the salt level is perfect the way it it's is. Like a, I wouldn't mess with that at all. Yeah, it's like a chloridey thing, and sometimes maybe with the mm. the water, it could blend together with the chlorides in your water to give this kind of a sweet salty. Yeah, you know, you're going for a sweet and salty thing here, and it, the way it plays is kind of nice. I don't like things that are too salty, and you know, well, as all Americans do, I, we probably oversalt everything. I like that this is subtle. In My wife salty. does. That's for damn sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, the bitterness is is low and out of the way. I've got a faint kind of earthy floral hop going on again, cleanly fermented. Uh, the balance is definitely to the malt. Um, there's a little bit of caramel in the flavor. It's, it's, it's low, but it's, it's noticeably in there playing with all the other elements and it doesn't stand out like, wow, this is zingy caramel. I agree with Brian there, but uh, you know, it just has a nice dark malt in the aftertaste, semi-sweet finish, um, the alcohol is fairly noticeable, but it's really smooth. See, I forgive it for the 7.9. <laughs> it's actually, you know, plays like a six and a half percent or could, you know, in some ways or so, or 6.9 maybe, but yeah, yeah. um, it's not harsh and no, no higher alcohols are sharper, like, uh, you know, harsh alcohols that are, that are biting at you there. And again, in the mouthfeel, it's just very smooth. There's no harsh biting or astringent quality to it whatsoever, um, it is somewhat creamy. I would say medium full bodied, which a porter can push up to, uh, but it's on the fuller side for, for a porter body wise, just the, the feel and the, you know, it's, it's, it's not watery, <laughs> um, medium, low carbonation. I'm not getting a, a major amount of warmth here, but there is a, there's a fair amount as you swallow it, you get a little bit of warmth down the throat, uh, but it's so smooth. Otherwise you barely notice that. Yeah, I I got it in my in my gut a little bit. Yeah, now further down, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I agree. yeah. And then the burps, right? Yeah, um, <laughs> haven't got there yet, but uh, you know. <laughs> right. Overall, uh, yeah, nicely nicely crafted salted caramel porter. I think it, it's got all the elements coming through. Although I prefer a bit more caramel to balance uh, a little bit better. Now, I don't think a little more caramel, uh, you know, however you do that process wise. It's going to stomp on the salt or the the porter style that's there. Um, there's plenty of complexity here to stand up to a little more caramel and have that play nicely. So I would, you know, regardless of whether you like it for yourself or not, it's I just to make a salted caramel porter, it's the one element that's just a, a little bit lower than the others and like not as harm, quite as harmonious, but it's it's the quality of it that's there is nice. And then I, I would like just a little bit more of it. So maybe, you know, if you can, where you're adding the caramel, uh, we don't we don't really know yet. But if you if you find out, you know sometimes, like JP said, it's something that can ferment out. And if you add it a little later in the process, or add a little bit more, um, you know. But I never figure said out that. a way to bring that up a little bit. I mean, um, Brian Sharp. A very clean beer uh, represents the 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 named intent quite well. So I gave it a 38 out of 50. Uh, again, Brian and I are at one point off, and that's cool. Uh, but thank you for sharing it, Sean, and I'd love to hear your recipe and talk about your beer some more. How, where, where do you want to take it? Et yeah. Well, real fast before, before we do that, yeah. I, I like it too. I'd probably give it a 35. I think there's still some edges. Um, I think the, the okay. porter sort of sticks out a little bit. There's some, I think a, a, a bitterness or like a harshness, which I think is like more of a grain thing. Um, I, I agree with what uh, Char was saying. I, I would like to see, and I think you too, Cooper, I would like to see more caramel. That smoothness sort of would would really help a lot. Um, 
I'm, I, I would think it's like an American porter. Um, it does feel sort of like more, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, a, a tacky, I guess. I, I would love to see this maybe like even like a robust porter, like a Baltic porter, um, something on, on the smoother side, if that makes you know any kind of sense. Um, I, I like it a lot. I, I agree. I don't think you should mess with the salt at all. And while you don't really get salt, uh, quote unquote, um, you know, you know, there's the, the, the chloride in the water. Like you, you, if you know what it is, you get the impression of like, okay, I see where the, where the salt it is, but I don't think that's like a deterrent to, to the beer in any way. Um, it sort of tastes like, like a coffee ice cream, like a really rich, nice coffee ice cream because of, I think, you know, your, your Porter recipe and maybe some of the grains in there. So it, it's, it's, uh, some of the nicer coffee ice creams I've had. This is exactly what it tastes like. I get the ice cream thing. The preference there. Uh, yeah, I think I think maybe just a little more a little more on the softer side of 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 the maybe, recipe. And I think pull, yeah. and dial that caramel up, which we'll figure out just right now. Um and I think you're I think you're like eighty percent to where I think you want to get. But uh Sean, go ahead and, and give us your recipe, man. I was gonna briefly say maybe pulling back the alcohol would achieve some of that, just pulling back the alcohol somewhat. I think pulling back the alcohol would be a great addition, but that's just me. So and I don't I, sometimes I don't want to say it because I think I just being you know, I'm just being like a, a low ABV, you know. Right. But guy. it's like it's like EQing a, you know, EQing a mix, you know. Sometimes yeah. you, you don't have to push something up to hear more of something else. You have to pull a, something back right. a little bit to get other things to come out, right? Yeah. Okay. So this, this was a American Porter style. Um, it, it actually was supposed to be 6.4%. I just was very efficient, to, I guess, <laughs> when I was, was uh, brewing it, um, which yep. it tends to happen on like a lot of my brews. I tend to be over than under. Yeah. Um, I, I'm trying to dial that in, but uh, anyway, it's a 52% Maris Otter, uh, 20% Munich, uh, 4.8% uh, Crystal 120, and 4.8% Crystal 60, uh, four, 5.6% of uh, candy sugar, Belgian candy sugar, amber, that was uh, added 20 minutes in the boil. Uh, and then within 15 minutes of the boil, I put in, I made a caramel, I made my own caramel out of Demi, Demerara sugar. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, it was, uh, 12 ounces of that, a little bit of a uh, wart I added to it and some lemon juice just to make that. And so that's wow. what I tried. There's also 3.4% special B, uh, 2.6% chocolate and 1.7% carapils. A lot of different malts. Yeah, there's a ton in there. Yeah, there is. And then hops is uh, is uh, one one ounce of Northern Brewer at 60 minutes, and a half ounce of East Kent Goldings at 15 minutes. The yeast I used was uh, 1968 London ESB. London ESB, okay. That's and good. it was uh, it was fermented at 150. I mean, uh, mashed at 152 for 90 minutes. All right. The salt I used was, um, it was Himalayan sea salt. I put in um, at, during the boil. It was just one, it was, um, it was actually like a little less than three quarters of an ounce. So it wasn't a lot. Yeah, that's really amazing how, you know, three quarters of an ounce of salt in what, five gallons? This was a, it was a 6.5 gallon batch. Yeah. Wow. A, a little bit of salt can go a long way, not just <laughs> right. in terms, which is why when, when I always talk about when people are over treating their water, I mean, it's not, you didn't do it for treating your water. You did it for getting a salted caramel flavor, but people can, you can weigh over treat your water real easy because it doesn't take that much to go from, uh, you know, just whatever water you had before to water that tastes like you're licking a rock. You know, it's just, yeah. Well, originally, uh, it I take a gonna, lot. originally I was going to do an ounce and then I was like, I don't want to go, you know, I'm, I'm going to 
play it safe, so I went a little under, and um, I feel like it it was the right move. It's a good yeah, that was totally yeah. the right call. Yeah, I think so too. Well, do we have any questions for Sean before I turn you, the floor to Sean? Yeah, on his he recipe fermented, or uh, fermentation profile, um, temperature controlled. Yeah, this was um, it was sixty eight degrees. And I, uh, I nice. do have temperature control, so it's it was a constant sixty-eight. Pretty standard, really. How so do I we? I think that's really, really well done. I yeah. Mean, so when you made the caramel, like, how difficult was that? Is that one of those things where you got to stand there and like stir it for like an hour or something? <laughs> yeah, well, caramel. not an hour, but yeah, it's like a 10, 15 minute process where you're just constantly stirring. So you don't want to burn it, you know. But you or want yourself. To... Yeah, but you want to care. You want to get that caramelization going so you gotta you know constantly stir and constantly stir and constantly stir and take it off the heat on the heat off the heat off and then um i i took some of the wort from the brew and i added 500 milliliters of that wort so that it would um liquefy a little better Mm. and be easier to pour in back into the boil smart that's a really smart idea yeah cool how do we get him more caramel flavor is it is it putting more caramel in or maybe caramel flavoring? Maybe cheating a little bit, doing a little bit of both? It was added during the boil, you said? Yeah. Well, my original plan was I was going to try and add that after fermentation where I was going to actually ferment and then transfer to another uh, fermenter, mm-hmm. clean out the fermenter that I had mm-hmm. to get as much yeast as possible out of the fermenter and then pour it back into the original fermenter, add the caramel and let it sit for whatever, a few days or whatever. And, um, I just, I didn't have the time to do it. So it's something you could add in it possibly in late fermentation where, I mean, that, mm-hmm. that, that is, you know, your caramel is going to be sterile. Basically you've cooked the hell out of it. It's right. hot. You mix it with some hot wort, and if it's not too much, you know, well, you you wouldn't want to pour it in too hot and get it to go. But you could, you know, you could cool it a little bit, cover it up, cool it in a little ice bath to kind of the, towards the temperature of your beer, and and put it in. Then it's a it's a sterile mixture going into your sterile environment or you know sanitized clean environment of your beer that's fermenting. So that could be one way to go. Cooper, what do you think about the later. exact same caramel process, but adding some caramel malt, like a pound or so? Yeah, the tricks you could use mm. to to bump up. So right, you do have some. That's what I'm thinking. There. It's like you know, it's it's. I, I, God, I think Sully did this, or someone on some session did this, where it's like a brewer, or it's like use the fruit, and then you take a little bit of the same fruit extract, and you and you dose it just for like a little bit of a, of a boost. And that's why I'm thinking like a caramel malt, like not a huge amount, but like maybe uh, eight ounces or a pound, like a pound mm-hmm. isn't going to, especially in a porter, that's not going to hurt you. It's not going to end up mm-hmm. as something that's going to, you know, it, it's going to have, hopefully have a synergy with the actual caramel that you made and, and are using. It's just, just yeah. kind of brainstorming off the top of my head here. Yeah, and like you, you like don't want a, like a raisiny malt. You don't want to go like special B or anything. No, like that, no, no that not get at too, all. But you know, maybe even like a British Crystal, yeah. like an like an ADL or like yeah, a, I was thinking like the British Crystal fifty sixty, but I fifty sixty. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Like you what, wouldn't what, want to go one twenty. That's interesting. Yeah, no, no. I did. I did the caramel is like the more the lower level bond. Okay, in there, I had twelve ounces, but yeah. Like, and I had 12 ounces of 120, so it's... Maybe you go a little more. Yeah, 50, I mean, 60. that was just... Ex- yeah. Again, I'm like, I was I was experimenting, trying to get yeah. this. Like, I don't know. I don't know how much to put in, how much, you know, if it's I, too much, too little. Well, that's the so thing, I, man. I mean, That was the whole thing with the caramel thing. How am I going to get this caramel flavor to come through? And you know what? And I, th- I think you did a really good job for someone who's never done it before. And that's where you go. You yep. start, you, you get a baseline, you try it one time and you figure out where to go from there. So and I, you, I, th- you know, we're not, we're not saying you need to tear it down from to the studs and, and re go. Yeah. You're, you're, you've, you've no. done pretty good job so far. It's just a matter of, of, of tweaking the aspects that you want and how right. to, how do we do that? Right. Just boosting that caramel a little somehow. Yeah. So I, th- yeah. I like the, the extra, a little bit of extra 50, 60, 
um, you know, try that, see what happens. If not, yeah, maybe so I, caramel I just flavor. Like going on the Breeze, the Breeze website, and like their caramel malt sixty L, it's a sweet and pronounced caramel. I want to say you more beer carries something around like with your that. Malt. Yeah, sorry, sorry, JP. No, that's all right. Um, yeah, do that, and um, yeah, see how it goes, man. You know, uh, little tweaks here. I would suggest You're on the right track. Possibly yeah. like simplifying the malt bill a little bit. There are some things in there that you might not really need in there because there are a lot of a little bit of this, a little bit of that kind of kitchen sink thing. Where like, if you can simplify it and just have what would you take out? Or what I would didn't you memorize do? the malt bill? I'm sorry. Right. There were there was so much and I've, I would have had to written it all down to you know, I would keep, okay. keep all the caramel malts, keep the you know, the chocolate malts and anything. Uh, yeah, like Richard special B maybe in the I don't think yeah, I might consider B's getting kinda... rid of special B because I don't think it really added anything to this. I would anything I would... that might be bitter. Mm-hmm. Yep. If a dark malt you might get rid of. I don't know that anything you read out was more of a bitter, like, but any like roasty dark malt, if you had one, I would get rid of that and maybe yeah. just try to simplify it a little bit. Yeah. I, I would honestly maybe try to, con, you know, con, consider going to a different style of porter. Oh, really? Yeah. Like what? Well, I was thinking like a, like a robust porter or yeah. just something with a beefier mouthfeel um, that, the sweetness can play with the caramel a little bit more. And then, you know, with a, with an accent to the caramel malt, like you said, Char. And I think that would just sort of like, because I, I think part of the issue where we lose some of the caramel is the, the sort of um, bent to the American style Porter, where maybe this little hop bitterness or something coming through that sort of cleans everything up. I think we need to, 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 to squeegee that out to get rid of that. And to focus, Squeegee. to focus okay. somewhere. Else. Yeah. So if we want salted caramel, um, you know, like an ice cream, um, you know, I, th- I think that the beer should sort of reflect that with with an appropriate amount of dryness. Right. Not just like super sweet and just kind of Chloe kind of thing. We don't want that. Right. But because that's one of the things I liked about this beer was that it was well attenuated. Mm-hmm. It was subtle. It wasn't like this big, you know, it, it's not like some high gravity you know, pastry stout mess that's a cloying, <laughs> yeah, I don't sweet, want that. whatever. No. I, I liked the dryness and the attenuation and the subtlety to it. I agree. But a little bit more, you know, it was, like I said, it was a little bit too subtle, like a little bit of just zhuzhing it up with the caramel, and maybe up. some malt or something else I, it, would, would help. For me, the flavors are 80% there. We just yeah. need to elevate. And and to do that, you might, you know, like I said, like a robust, in my opinion, and I could be wrong, robust, maybe Baltic. You can try all these things. You're only been brewing ten months. You have you, you're you're going to be brewing this uh, probably a thousand times before you have it right. <laughs> and even then, you might not even get it right in your mind because you always want to. You'll yeah. always be driving to do something different with it. So, yeah. um, that's that's what that's where I that's where I'm. I think yeah. we've given you a, a lot to think about for that. Just yeah, look up some basic robust porter recipes, and some of them might, they they might surprise you in their simplicity. You know, look up a Black Butte porter clone, or, brewing classic styles, you know, the brewing classic styles yeah. version yep. of the robust porter. Yeah. And, you know what, JP? I love a Baltic. I think a ball. I I will drink a Baltic porter all day. Yeah. Well, until I pass out because you can't drink a Baltic porter all day. Sure. But I that's one I wouldn't go. I think a salted caramel Baltic porter would be badass. But I think it's also going to be complicated because that's a 10, 12 percent lager. Oh, that's right. Uh, OK, never that's mind. A really Don't do that big one. beer. Robust and porter. I would maybe get. And I would love, you know, Sean, if you ever want to do that, please, please share that with us. <laughs> but I would maybe try to keep, you know, yeah. put a fine tune, like maybe a, a robust a salted caramel, robust porter or mm-hmm. like a, a British porter or something. An English so porter, I think, would be the Baltic. An English porter would be my, my no. first suggestion. Baltic is only yeah six and a half to nine and a half. It's not twelve percent, but no, well, yeah. the ones that I've the way I've, Brian Shar makes have been them, like ten percent, yeah. and oh my god, it's it can ten. Um, it gets yeah imperial yeah. stronger. Sean, yeah. do you have any questions that you want us to address? Um, no, I mean I think you guys pretty much hit most of the the notes there. I was just okay. you know the the caramel thing was the thing I was really struggling with trying to figure out like how I'm going to get more of a caramel punch out of this. You know, it, it, I, I definitely was a little disappointed in that, but mm-hmm. um, I wouldn't no, change the way you like, I do like the beer though, but I mean, it's I there. Know. Like I yeah, can it's, see it's it. And I think it's a cool, I think it's a cool concept. What you've done is 
great. After yeah. 10 months of brewing, you made a really nice beer. I think the logo is pretty tight, too. Yeah. Hold on to that. Trademark that. That's, again, that's, that's <laughs> copyright. The, wife, the wife's doing. I, I got to give her all the credit for that. Yeah, get a, get a, <laughs> get, get a trademark on that. That would be a cool shirt. It's going to be yeah. sold in commerce, but Honestly. that's okay. Yeah. You can sell those shirts. Yeah. I'm a trademark guy, so just give me a call. There you go. <laughs> So don't yeah, don't um, change the way you're doing your caramel. Just maybe add a little more of it and, yeah. and adjust the recipe a little bit. Do some do a do a porter on its own sometime and dial that in a little bit and then add the caramel. You can salt. do that too. All yep. right, Sean. Well, if that's it, man, we'll let you split. All right. Thanks, guys. Cool. We'll appreciate you. Thanks, dude. Thanks, right. man. Thank you. Mad right. geez. We're gonna take a quick break and we'll come right back here and wrap it up with Dr. Homebrew. Hang tight. All right, thanks for sticking around, everybody. We are going to get out of here. I want to thank Ashley and Sean for sending us uh, beers. Well, uh, mead, mead. And, and, and a beer. Uh, that's cool. I like changing it up a little bit, man. It's fun. The mead was tasty. The beer was great, too. Yeah, yeah everything was that good, was, that man. That was really cool. It was a cool show because it was like sort of showcased the 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 level that, you know, if you're making something really, really good and you could always make it better, but they were they were both like 80% there. You know, it was kind of neat 90. to see. It was like, oh yeah, it's like uh, just we're, we're almost we're almost there. And how do you polish that? How do you and just you get that last are, yes little yeah. bit? How, how would someone polish their beer if they wanted to improve it and and send it into a show where they could get that done? Yeah, would they would they email somebody uh, like me? I don't know. Sure, crosspondlaw dot com, right? <laughs> Uh, Ryan at, at thebrewingnetwork.com. There you go. That's that what one. it is. Yeah. But it was cool, man. I don't know. It's, I, I like seeing, I like when we get two entrants that, that are almost there and talking about fine tuning. Yep. You know what I mean? That's, that's the kind of uh, where we can sort of get lost in the weed sometimes on the show. And I like that. I think it's neat. Like how do you fine tune like thing, we did know? about we could have gone about a defective beer, you know, when we just went right. on and on about some of these fine points. And that is some of the fun of judging. Yeah, so and, I, I agree. And you know, I learned a lot about mead from Ashley, yeah. which I don't know a lot about mead, and her her mead was amazing. And it was really cool that Sean gave us a beverage that we've never had before. Never had it. And the guy's brewed for less than a year, and he's making a beer. It took me like ten years to get to a point of making something that good. It's amazing, <laughs> right? Yeah. That, that takes some talent. It really does. All right, everybody. Yeah. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, like Brian said, if you want to get on the show, brian at thebrewingnetwork.com. Send us beer, kombucha, mead, cider, whatever you want to do. If you ferment Suck it at it. home, uh, we will ingest it at our homes and then tell you about it while you are at your home, if that makes you know a whole lot of sense. Yep. Oh, excuse me. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot. I'll see you later. Cheers.